All right, then. Wait a minute. What episode are we on? Pink, what episode are we on? I don't I know. I believe this is 17. Okay. I, I, I didn't know. I don't know. Jamie doesn't keep me in the loops. He just says, hey, do this job for the week because I can't. So, yeah, do it for me because I'm a lazy fucking bastard. <laughs> and then, yeah, LJ has to go off and leave. So, it's me. Well, again, this is not LJ's fault. Right. He was told last minute he had to go to his dad's. Right. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. I'm on to you, LJ. <laughs> I'm on to you. <laughs> but yeah, I am apparently taking over for Jamie this week. I'm Fish Dragon. This is Pink, the only one who's actually here on a regular enough basis. Hello! And this is Ryan, the super awesome guy I go to for graphic design and occasionally music stuff because he's awesome like that. Hi. And uh, yeah, that's um. Introduction's over! Story time! Time, story time, story time. Pink, you go first since you actually have something that's actually a story and Ryan can get the idea of what to do. And boy, do I have one hell of a story to all you... And no one saw that pun coming. (laughs) To all you Black Butler fans, more info, uh, new info regarding the new Black Butler anime has been revealed today. Yay, more Black Butler news. What's new this time? Because we've only heard it five times on this podcast. Okay, well, basically what the news is, is that there, um, obviously everyone knows about the new anime. It has been revealed that the new anime is going to be titled Black Butler Book of Circus. And judging by um, the poster and the cast, it's most likely going to be focusing on the um, circus arc in the manga. Which I'm like, yay! It's it's so awesome. I love that arc. Yeah, I I know you were big on how the first one just kind of ended up pulling the weird stuff anime does when it comes to an end and it's nowhere near covered as much as the manga. So I know that at some point in random podcast i can't recall which one don't ask me to i will never remember but (laughs) yeah you you were kind of big on the whole wanting them to try and get closer to the manga Mm -hmm. although i do have to um ask in terms of this if um it's gonna try following the original manga or are they starting from scratch in terms of this so you still don't quite know on that regards anyway? Yeah, I mean, it's most likely that they're starting from scratch, but again, don't know, because... But it's also been revealed that aside from the anime, there is also an OVA that's going to be coming out called Black Butler Book of Murder. And looking at that, it's most likely going to focus on the murder mystery arc in the manga. Which I'm pretty excited to see, but at the same time, I'm a little skeptical because that did take up a few um, volumes of the manga. Like, it took up about three, maybe not even, maybe less than that. It it still took up a lot. And the fact that it's going to be an OVA, which is mostly, um, like, 30 minutes... I, I am curious, but also a little skeptical of how well that's going to pull off. Regardless, though, I'm still really excited because we do have the circus arc being the main focus of the anime. I'm not sure how that entire arc is going to serve as, like, the entire premise of the anime. But still, it'd be very interesting to see. And looking at the um, Japanese cast, you have most of the original Japanese VAs for the characters returning. As well as some new VAs for the new cast, such as Mamoru Miyano as Joker, Ayahi Takagaki as Doll, Yuko Kaida as Beast, Nobuhiko Akamoto as Dagger, and Takuma Terashima as Snake. But definitely, like, um, the um, actors are very memorable. I think that, um, out of all of them, the one I recognize the most is Mamoru Miyano. And having him play Joker, that is perfect casting right there. I can say right there, that's perfect. All right. Mm-hmm. Ryan, do you happen to know anything about Black Butler? <laughs> I wish I did, because this is, seems like if I knew something about Black Butler, I'd really love to... Mm-hmm. Like, I'm always for um, like talking about when OVAs sort of use canon material as opposed to something that would be in the story usually, but... Um, mm-hmm. I just... Uh, 
unfortunately, I can't really have anything interesting to say about Black Butler. I mean, I've, I've been meaning to watch it and read it, but I haven't had the chance. I have steered clear from it just because it is one of those series that seems like it fuels far too much into the whole Yaoi fandom thing. Like, there's just too much negative connotation for me to get past. <laughs> and and I think that mainly has to do with the fact that like one of the characters apparently likes dressing up as girls or something like that. And god damn it, Pink dropped, I think. Damn it, Pink, don't you dare leave me here. She bailed because... <laughs> We haven't seen Black Butler. <laughs> uh, it's like I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> she could have. She could have. Uh, <laughs> they have no taste. I'm leaving. No class. No class. <laughs> Jamie, this is the kind of shit that happens when you leave. Like this is a direct consequence of you leaving. I hope you're happy with yourself. God. I apologize for that. My God. internet is a piece of shit. No, it's okay. I was just ba basically blaming Jamie, saying that this was all his fault. Blame the English. What? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you English? No. <laughs> I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm. It, it's just one of those series that fans seem to go through a lot of links to make a lot more yaoi out of it than, you know... It should, and the creators certainly don't help that. It's definitely worse in terms of season two, but then again, I, I even find season two to be a piece of shit. Alright, so Ryan, <laughs> do you think you're comfortable enough yet, or do you want to see me make a complete ass myself as I do three short stories because I can't find anything major? Uh, I, I would love to see you make an ass of yourself first. Oh, gee, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> thanks a lot, Dimension. friend. Don't mention it. Amigo. Hombre. Assets. But yeah, I, I don't have one single major story because life hates me. So, three short stories. Short story number one. Kishimoto has said that Naruto will end this year. For many, this is thank God news. And uh, yeah, it's confirmed that it, the manga will end this year. There's not looking to be like any new arcs like time skips like many people were thinking where it's like some years later naruto is hokage he has kids with hinata watch but apparently that's not going to happen it's going to end this year and big surprise kishimoto has no fucking clue what he's doing he doesn't know how madara is going to end up being defeated he's openly admitted that and he's also said from the beginning of the series he has you know pretty much had sasuke in mind to become hokage so Fans take that however the hell you want. Cause I, I don't give a I don't give a rat's ass about this thing anymore. I, I am glad to f that I can finally have, you know, closure from this thing and so I can just stop waiting to see how far this train wreck goes before it just stops. I know the end is in sight now. My yeah, pain I, will be like, worth it. Naruto has gotta be the longest running series, right? It's not the longest series. Like I think I don't know if Shonen Jump does this, but there's a manga series called Hajime no Ippo. It's like a boxing thing. There are over a thousand damn chapters to that thing. And <laughs> and I, I don't even know if Detective Conan is still a thing, but that has been around for fucking ever. So it's not the longest running manga, but it's very stale and I will be glad to see it die. Yeah, it is quite... Uh... It's like quite prominent in sort of every sort of culture aspect of anime. You can't really talk about anime without mentioning oh, yeah. Naruto in some form, and I think that's I think that's sort of a I don't know. It's sort of a stigma that I have about anime because I don't. I'm not really a big fan of Naruto. I mean, I I, I began watching it and really didn't enjoy it. I just uh, and then they just kept um, I kept hearing about it from people saying, oh, how mm. how this is ridiculous and all the different aspects of the story that's been yes. going on and it was it was all right for me up until the point when it's basically like i am the bad guy i killed most of everyone in your village what are you going to do about it i'm going to forgive you really yes believe me okay phoenix down no jutsu everybody lives and then to that point it's just like are you fucking shitting me like are you are you goddamn serious <laughs> really really Really? 
Should I keep reading this? <laughs> a lot of the time, though, it's um, they've got a certain way that they want the plot to go, and they can't find a sufficient device to make it go that way in a smooth sort of trajectory. So they'll usually use methods either like shock tactics or something like that and just use that in their favour to turn it around to get it to where they want it to be at a certain point so they can carry on. But it was... <sighs> it was... I have no way to describe how... how... terrible that kind of thing was. <laughs> I mean, that, that... I mean, seriously, Ichiro Oda with One Piece does the most random-ass shit, and he can still, by the end of it, make everything feel like, yes, there is a master plan behind everything. You don't understand something now? Guess what? It'll be addressed later, but for the most part, you there's never a feeling that, you know, that, you know, despite it being chaotic, there's a method to the madness, and he plays that beautifully, whereas this, whereas, like, with Naruto and Bleach, at some point, it's just like, I don't give a flying fuck anymore. This is making me money. So just, you know, zombie ninjas! Or, you know, Ichigo is a whore! Because that's pretty much what Ichigo is. He has pretty much anything and everything in the series inside him. He is a fucking whore. He is everything. He is a whore. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Naruto. And then, about a week ago... One webcomic I prominently read on Shifty Look called Bravo Man edit on its 30th issue and Shifty Look is basically shutting down most of their stuff saying, you know, when we started this we were basically trying to get, you know, small time characters or characters not remembered very well back into this new age and maybe generate some new interest. So like Bravo Man, Wonder Momo, Katamari, Klonda, Dig Dug, really old stuff like that. They basically kind of tried to, you know, bring him back into popularity. And they basically said, we've accomplished that. So whatever happens from here on, it's, you know, up to everyone else, whether or not they want to do anything with it. But for the most part, we succeeded. We brought these names back up out of obscurity. So we're done. Mission completes. But why just, stop? Well, they... That was apparently their mission. Just, you know, you don't remember these characters or, you know, these characters weren't popular and we kind of felt they should have been. So we're doing web comics, video game, like short little video games or actual videos and stuff and just bring these characters back up and, you know, bring them into something to where they could be something again. And apparently they've done that. So they're moving on to other pursuits. I don't know exactly what, but... Yeah, their main one that I've been reading, Bravo Man, ended on the th th 300th issue, and it was pretty good how it ended. There, it was basically like a like 12 part mini arc called The Death of Bravo Man, and this comic is basically all about meta humor, breaking the fourth wall, crazy shit like that. So it it was a pretty epic ending, all things considered. Where basically the you know final boss as it were was connected to the comic itself so if he died the comic would die and it's just like you know what it's fine and they made it epic and short story number three another video game story about research more being can playing a video game make you racist new study says yes because no one can let shit like this die <laughs> okay i just gotta ask gonna... something how does playing video games make you racist well, yeah. this was on the Daily Beast. Let's see. According to the study, whites... I, I'm quoting this word for word, so I, I don't want this being held against me, if at all possible. Whites who played violent video games with a black avatar were not only generally more aggressive than when they play with a white avatar, but they also came away from the game with negative stereotypes, including the belief that blacks are more violent people. Okay. So, uh, so it's, it's mostly shit like that. Basically, they're telling people, play this game, we're going to randomly generate an avatar for you. He's either going to be black or white, you're not going to know, we just want to see how you play. And apparently the general consensus is, whenever they were playing as black people, black avatars, they were being way more aggressive and stuff like that. And by the end, it's just like, oh, well, you know, they're totally racists. Where was this study conducted? Um, I think it was Ohio State that had done it, that was doing the study. They were in charge of it or something like that. Let's see. A study out of Ohio State University. So, yeah, apparently that's their thing. Oh, okay. I mean, it's quite interesting. 
to to sort of see how that would affect people in yeah but at the same time like i don't really think that like this would affect everyone i mean i'm pretty sure that there are people that whether a character is white or black they'll play the same way it depends on like the difficulty on the boss that you're fighting while playing as that character yeah, the main problem with studies like this, though, is that regardless of whatever research they end up pulling from it, there's always that way they try to put this spin on it that makes it sound like every gamer is like that. Like, it's not just an isolated thing. It's just like, oh, th this isn't just like 10% or 5% or 20% of the game population. This is like gamers in general. This is why video games are evil. I like just... They always do this weird spin, even when they're being informative, there's always that undertone that, yeah, for now it's just 20, but what happens next year when it's 30? Because this is totally inevitable for gamers, and it's goddamn bullshit. I mean, yeah, you can interpret the data any way you want. I mean, I let's just look at the facts. This study was done on, was it white males playing yeah, video games? Yeah, apparently it was done with... Let's see, how many players? In the experiment, 126 white students, 60% males, were asked to play Saints Row 2 with a randomly assigned avatar for 20 minutes. And then they, at some point, switched to a black avatar, and they were given b three objectives. To break out of prison, kill any in the way guards, or find a chapel and not hurt anyone. Okay. And then, and then the basic statement is that... For the most part, the players were asked questions that met it, that you know measured how they felt about blacks and found that you know the players with the black avatars had more negative perceptions, saying stuff like it's really a matter of some people not trying hard enough. If blacks would only try harder, they could be just as well off as whites. So yeah, there's just so much into this that you know just makes it sound like they're automatically saying this is pretty much what game what video games do to people as a whole they're it's yeah. it's not isolated people who are assholes it's video gamers in <laughs> general and it pisses me off that they keep doing shit yeah. like this okay first well, off i gotta point out something all of them are white why didn't they have any black gamers because i'm pretty sure that if they actually had some black gamers in there then the entire experiment would be different there were... Well, that's the thing. They have to they have to make sure that all the variables are the same. So they can't have uh, white and black people because if because it's an actual study on racism, they can't they can't alter another variable apart from what avatar they're playing. So that's sort of the reason why they only use white people. True. But they could have done a different study with just black people saying that. So. Yeah, true. But still, this is pretty much saying that gamers in general, both white and black, this is. Male I mean, and female, we, although they did say that half was male, but apparently they are also saying that, you know, it doesn't matter what gender you are, what skin color you are, video games make you racist. Yeah, that is what just is completely... What is the headline? The headline was pretty much what I said. Can a video game make you racist? New study says yes. Yeah, that's just completely mi misrepresenting the data that was brought from that experiment. Mm -hmm. There's, it, it's, it's media sensationalism at its finest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And honestly, I am getting sick of so many people looking for so many different excuses just to blame video games for what's going on in the world. Newsflash, video games is a form of media. If you're saying that video games are affecting the community, why not movies? Why not books? Why not a lot of stuff? Like shows! I mean, yeah. <laughs> Before television, there were still murders. Yes! <laughs> so... And it, it, it gets particularly bad after a national tragedy or something like that happens to where, you know, one mentally unstable person decides, I'm going to go to whatever random place I feel like, and, you know, next thing you know, you read this headline that goes on for weeks about how this one unstable character and how video games disturbed him and pushed him off the edge of reality or some garbage like that was responsible for like killing 20 or more people injuring 16 or more people and just bottom line whenever something like a natural tragedy happens to us it is scary how more often than not the first 
real thing you hear is the person who went out and did this was someone who played violent video games. That is like the first thing you really ever hear about the person. And here's here's the bottom line. Regardless of whether video games uh, cause violence or not, which in my opinion they don't, I've done some research for another show I was working on, and basically it was inconclusive the whole thing but so i just basically went on my opinion and said i don't think they cause violence but first of all the people playing these video games usually are under 18 or under 21 or whatever the age is for somebody who would be playing that video game uh, able to play that video game some of them are outright banned in certain countries for example australia's gaming ban rules actually prohibited saints row 4 because it was purposely marketed to adults so they shouldn't even be playing these game if, games if they're children. And then pe- and then parents complain that the video games are making their children violent when they're the ones that let them play the game in the first place. But it's, yeah, that no one likes owning up to the blame. They have to find something else to blame. And, you know, what's a better target than video games? Because everyone's blaming that. We can just hop on the bandwagon. Yep. Exactly. All right, so your turn now, Ryan. Dance for us, little monkey. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about... Uh... A violent video game. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, I'm getting really excited about uh, the new Batman sequel that's coming out next year, Batman Arkham Knight. And basically, it's being uh, developed by Rocksteady again, which were the ones that did the original uh, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, which has made me, again, really excited because I was quite disappointed with uh, Origins as it was by a different developer and they didn't really keep true to the to the format. I felt it was... Uh, a bit lackluster, so hopefully they'll bring back some of the spark that they had in the first two games. Yeah, and Jamie it's... was saying something about two different developers being signed on to do, like, alternating years with mm-hmm. Arkham stories. Ah. But yeah, um, it looks really good, and it actually looks to be the game that is going to push me onto the next generation. It's going to be the one that makes me buy a PS4. Uh, so I've been doing some... Uh, some snooping around on it, and I really like that they brought back uh, the original uh, voice actor for Batman, the one from uh, Batman the Animated Series, Kevin Conroy. Absolutely fantastic voice actor. Big fan. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know if anyone's played to the end of City, and if you haven't, spoiler alert, but uh, the Joker is still gone. As in, dead. <laughs> so... Uh, but if you haven't played Arkham City yet, that's your fault. It's an amazing game. You should have played it by now. Uh, and basically, uh, it's uh, set one year after the events of Arkham City when Batman is at the peak of his abilities. And he looks a lot slimmer, I have to say. he's uh, He's been going for a jog once <laughs> in a while. Uh, the, ma- the main thing I noticed is that like he's apparently sporting a new bat suit, And this was also to tie in with some new villain the arkham knight who is like a you know yeah that was what i was going to move on to actually it's like what is the arkham knight yeah like he he, he apparently looks a lot like batman the only difference is instead of a giant bat symbol on his chest he has an a because that's totally original <laughs> but it looks to be uh set in gotham city and uh everyone's been evacuated due to scarecrow i think is the premise of the plot because there's always a reason in the batman games there's always a reason why there's only criminals around. I mean, Arkham Asylum. Obviously, you're in an asylum. Uh, Arkham City. Obviously, it's a it's a huge prison that they've that, that they've made out of a city. And then <laughs> I was a bit confused by Origins because it just seemed like everyone had gone inside for Christmas. <laughs> that was that was the only reason. It's like, oh, no one's no one's out like uh, at bars or anything uh, with no family or so. It's just all thugs just out in the street. Oh, hey, it's Batman. We got nothing better to do than kick the shit out of him. Let's try. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to to what this game has to offer, and I'd. Uh, and I'd really like to see what they do with uh, with all the villains and stuff. Like, I've seen that one, like, two-second clip of Harley beating up those guys and flipping that hat onto her head. She just looks badass. And then Two-Face as well. So I'd really like to see uh, what they do with all the villains. Uh, but have you guys heard anything about it that you uh, mm. like to talk about? I'm not really a full-on Batman th- fan, so... And I haven't played Arkham, so yeah. I've, I've, oh. just picked, I've just picked up on like little tidbits, and that's just mainly new Batman, except he's not Batman. He has an A on his chest. That's how you know he's not Batman. <laughs> I'm not Batman. Yeah, that, that, that. I'm not Batman. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's the bat! <laughs> no, it isn't. I'm the bats. I'm the Arkham Knights. We gotta get out of here. Oh wait, no, it's not Batman. Let's stick around. <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows? Maybe he's cool. Let's let's you know see what he let's see what he does if we offer to share brewski with him. Yeah, it's like everybody run. It's a man. What? No, I'm I'm the Arkham Knight. Oh, uh, oh. you better costume, <laughs> bud. But yeah, <laughs> that's uh. That's my that's my story. I'm really excited for for Arkham Knight. I'm really looking forward to all the new gameplay features, gameplay features it can it can bring to the table, especially in the new generation. And it's going to be the game that pushes me over the edge and actually makes me get a PS4. So, all right then. So now we conclude with the part I did not think to do ahead in advance: the questions. And at this point, Jamie plays that crappy epic music he likes playing. <laughs> Fuck you, Jamie. You're not professional. I like You're not. Music. I never... <laughs> okay, so since I didn't do this ahead of time, I'm just going to bullshit random questions and we'll see what happens with the answers. That's basically how it goes. Anyway, we try to do actual people questions if we ever get them, but we rarely ever get them. Sometimes we'll get questions like with Yar, with like Haruko saying, "If you were in a yaoi, would you be the seme or the uke?" We might as well make that a question. And my answer would be, "No, Haruko, I am not ever going to be in a yaoi. I don't care how much you want me to be in a yaoi. I will not be in a yaoi. I will not be a seme or an uke in a yaoi because I am not going to be in a yaoi." You'd be the comic relief character. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> <laughs> That's always that's always made to felt feel really awkward by all the yaoi stuff Apparently going on. Apparently that would be my role. <laughs> well, first of all, I am a girl, so... Well, we had a one gender-bending thing question where you answered what you would do with that, so let's assume it's on the same pretext of you not having Okay, it. fine. So if I was male, I would most likely be uke. All right, then. And which one was that again? That is the receiving end. All right, then. So now you know which what's the that one is, and you should probably be able to guess who the other one is. So which would you be, Ryan? The other one. <laughs> 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 All right then, another question. Why do you think Jamie sucks so much? Which basically, base? No, 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 no. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's a bit too cruel for him. He may, he may, he may start crying. Okay. Why do you think the sky happens to never be pink? I don't know. It does, it's pink yeah, plenty of it, times. It you just pink. Like, you, stringing during, words like, together. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's dawn or dusk. I, I don't know. But it can have like a pinkish color. Yeah. It's, it, it, there's a rhyme about it. It's like red sky in morning, shepherd's warning, red sky mm, at night, shepherd's yeah. delight or something like that. It tells you, tells you what it's going to rain in the morning or not. And then that red usually involves mm -hmm. pinks and oranges as well. Alrighty then. So how about one of you come up with a question? Because I am, I am shit <laughs> out of poop right now. <laughs> that is pretty much it. I've been crapping out questions and I am shit out of poop. If you had to choose an anime theme to be your theme, what would it be? Clarify, please. <laughs> like, for example, you know how anime have like a lot of um, opening or ending themes to them? Mm -hmm. Um, if you had to choose a theme on which one would be your theme specifically, which one would it be? I don't know. I don't exactly do anything exciting enough to warrant a theme song. And even if I do, I just end up going to Ryan to make it. I probably go with like a, a supernatural sort of thing. But, like a, but not like a... Sort of like magic, I'd say. I really like... Uh, I'm getting into Dungeons & Dragons at the minute, so if there was an anime that's just like my Dungeons & Dragons <laughs> game, I'd love that. <laughs> Are there any... Is there any type of music you thought you wouldn't like but then turned out to really like? Uh, sure, we can do that kind of question, but... I, I, my taste in music is all over the place. I pretty much don't ever expect to like anything until I actually listen to it and find out whether or not I like it. I don't know what it is I particularly like about a song, but it's just, there's just something that if it enters my head, ears, I just, it's like, 
this actually sounds pretty good. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, like Japanese stuff or hell right now I'm listening to Russian music. I have no idea what they're singing. And yet I'm still just kind of going along with the beat. They could basically say you are a cock munch who listening to this song without understanding the lyrics. And I'm still just like, oh yeah, this is my jam. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. It doesn't really matter what type of song it is and in what language. If it's something really good, I'll definitely listen to it. However, I do have standards, though. Like, for example, I hate Screamo. And also, I like some rap, but again, it depends on the rap. If My cousin, for the most part, summed up rap for me in, you know, three simple themes most raps tend to sing about. And this is, quote, unquote, money, bitches, and hoes. Not all raps. I know for a fact that um, Japanese rap, like um, raps in Japan with um, a lot of themes. Well, he doesn't listen to Japanese stuff, so I think he's meaning that more towards the English-speaking rappers. You know, like DJ Wonderbread, the white guy thinking he's black, but he's not. He's not fooling anybody. Get get a fucking job. I I like... uh... I like rap, but only only recently I've uh, got into people like Tech Nine and uh, Yellow Wolf and people like that, and they tend to sing about uh, well, they tend to rap about even <laughs> they tend to rap about stuff like uh, success and the progression through the through the mu- through the music ladder and things like that. Uh, but uh, I really I really do like every sort of music. I know that's a sort of a cliche thing to say, but I actually do. I mean, there are some artists that I don't particularly like, but then that's just my personal preference. But every genre of music, there is somebody in that genre of music that I really like. For example, I like Kesha. I think I like maybe one song from Kesha, but that's about it. Again, mm. it's it doesn't tend to matter who it is. It's just, does the beat really catch me? And can I, you know, find myself dancing like a white boy to it? That, that, that's pretty much is it. Am I am I start yeah. moving unconsciously to it, and can I really get into it? Which there are very few moments where I can just say, it's just like, oh god, it's Kesha. I, god, I I don't want to support this artist. The only one I really do that to is Justin Bieber. Oh yeah, and that's just, definitely. And that's just that's just on principle. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't really like Justin Bieber. I think he's uh he's yeah. really. And we've lost about forty percent of our just female. Just not a nice person. <laughs> just not a nice person uh. but anyway <laughs> yeah and i and i um in contrast to pink i actually do uh, really like um screamo music all of a sudden i have a song playing uh, in my head now i i don't know what it is it was something about a water scooter it's like you get do do to the rata water scooter in the in get a do do to the rata water scooter you got a in that do do in that do do in that and toot toot. Oh, god damn it! If I had to say what type of music I like the most in terms of like um groups that do music, I love Disney music. Disney music, I got the off on. Yeah, I love Disney music too. <laughs> and I've got the whole Frozen soundtrack on my Spotify. <laughs> nice. And I also love Vocaloid. His Vocaloid's really good. I don't really listen. To, don't really listen to much, uh, much Vocaloid, but what I have heard, I I'm, I enjoy. Mm-hmm quite a bit it's good good to like well it's good to ddr to i guess (laughs) oh there is a game that's kind of like a ddr to it already well there are a bunch already but there actually was um one that got localized um last year all right we have fulfilled our obligations we don't owe jamie a damn thing anymore i am fish dragon this has been pink shoe chan (laughs) and ryan who is awesome thanks for having me and yeah, Jamie, you are an asshat. Fuck you, and I hope you die in a fire. That's not nice. Well, that's what he gets for putting me in charge. Maybe.